What's up y'all, I'm Alan Hayne, the Lawn Care Nut, and today I am gonna show you how to confidently and properly apply Milorganite to any lawn. And we're gonna do it right here behind me. And we're gonna do it using a consumer grade or what, what you might call standard grade spreader. This is the Scott's Edge Guard Deluxe. But you'll be able to do this with any spreader that you have. I'm just gonna use this one today. And we're gonna be applying to this section of lawn right here. But before we do that, Let's get some background information real quick. So I've got here a bag of Milorganite fertilizer and there's two things I wanna point out on here. The first one is that point to take away your fear. So always read what's on here. See this here, slow release? This is a slow release fertilizer. And because it's a natural product that is slow release, it is also non-burning. It looks natural and spreads easy. Smells like success. It's definitely not gonna burn anything. So that's what I'm trying to get at here. Take away your fear, you can apply this, you're not gonna burn anything. But I still want you to do it right. You still wanna get down the right amount, and you wanna do that because you wanna get the right results. And so that's the next little piece of information I wanna show you on this bag. It's kind of a shortcut to the quick way to apply the product. So see this right here? This is what's called the bag rate covers up to 2,500 square feet. Now I'll be including a blog post that'll be on the Milorganite blog that'll talk about some of the math behind this. But for right now, all you need to know is that that entire bag of Milorganite right there covers 2,500 square feet. So what that means is we need to find an area in our lawn, in your lawn, in my lawn, that is about 2,500 square feet. Almost every one of you will be able to carve out some area, some logical area, a square would be best or a square and a rectangle, an area that's 2,500 square feet. Now, in order to find 2,500 square feet, you have to do a little bit of easy math, and this is important, you have to measure out your lawn. So I would go here, length times width. So I would measure that length, and I'd measure that width, and I'd multiply them together, and I would understand what the square footage of this rectangular area is. Now, there are other ways to measure your lawn, including online tools like Google Earth. The idea is that whatever method you choose to use, that you find an area that's 2,500 square feet, which for me, because I've measured this, this area here is 2,000 square feet, which includes that little bump out. And then when I go to the edge of that flower bed over there and include these bump outs, that's another 500. So for me, a logical area of 2,500 square feet is right there. So here's what we know so far. This bag right here, this entire bag is made to cover that area there, which is 2,500 square feet. This is the spreader that I'm gonna use. So am I just gonna take that big bag, dump it all in there and go for it? Throw her down, hope for the best. No, I'm gonna actually eat the elephant in small bites. Well, in two bites. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dump half of that bag into that spreader. But first, I'm gonna set the spreader. So every spreader gets adjusted a little bit differently. All the Scott spreaders work on this dial. And you'll see that as you move the dial, we'll go down here to a low number, two and a half. I will actuate the handle. And you can see that drop hole barely opens. And on the flip side, I can dial it all the way up here to like a 14, actuate the handle you'll see it opens up much more, much greater. And that's about the max it's gonna open up. What we wanna do is be conservative with this first half of our bag. Think of this as a test run. We're gonna apply it evenly, and I'll show you that in a minute. You're not gonna run through this, you're just gonna take a nice leisurely pace, and you're gonna see what you get with the first half of the bag. Now, what I recommend you do with any spreader is we need to still pick a setting, and I recommend you go somewhere right around one third or maybe a little bit more than one third open. So since this has 15 numbers on it, one third open is gonna be five. I'm gonna to go to about five and a half. And I'm just gonna actuate the handle and take a look there. That doesn't look like it's gonna to be too much, does it? The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reach in and I'm just gonna grab a few of these luscious prills. And I'm gonna set them in there around that drop hole and still being on that setting I chose, which is a little bit more than one third, I'm gonna open the hopper and just take a look. Look at the size of the grains versus the opening. Does it look like they're gonna flow too fast? Does it look like they're gonna flow fairly logically? I don't, I don't think that looks like anything scary, that's for sure. You're seeing that we're gonna trust our gut here. We're only risking half the bag and I can promise you if you stay right around the one third setting on pretty much any spreader, you're not gonna overdo it. Remember this is to just get that first pass down, see how we do, get some data, get the feel of walking, get the feel of your spreader spreading, and then we'll move on to the second half. But first, let's get down this first half of the bag. Now, you can actually eyeball it, just feel it. It's a 32 pound bag. It's a 32 pound bag, so you're gonna take 16 pounds out. If you wanted to weigh it on a scale or something, you could, but it's okay to go ahead and just eyeball it here.
And there you go. Now let's get another visual. You can see how much is in your hopper and then just visualize where it's gonna go. Now the pattern that we're gonna take is I'm gonna do a trim pass first, which means I'm gonna do all of my edges. Okay, so I've done a complete edge. And I can just look. I don't know if you'll be able to see it here, but you can see where some of the fertilizer's gone down. I was watching that go down as I was walking, just getting a feel for it. Now that all of my edges are done, I'm just gonna go back and I'm gonna fill in the middle like this. And each time I'm gonna throw back to the wheel tracks of my previous pass. Okay, so here's what we've learned. Setting it here at about one third plus, almost as good. I got, I don't know what, an eighth of a pound left here. That's negligible. So I am gonna go ahead though, because I wanna do the other half and I wanna try to hit closer. I am gonna go ahead and dial it up just a tick to the six mark. Yeah, six and a quarter. This one goes in quarters. So I dialed it up to six and a quarter. I got it dialed up to that six and a quarter. So I'm gonna do the same exercise again. Yeah, it looks a little bit wider. It looks like it should be good. Remember, I only had just that little tick left there, that eighth of a pound or whatever. This also gives me a chance to do a nice overlap, so I'm gonna go this way now. Same thing, I'm gonna do a full outline, go back and forth, throw them back to the wheel tracks, but this will give me a little bit of better overlap. So there you go, that hit it almost dead on. You can see me shaking to get the last few grains down. So if I was to do this all over again, I would definitely be somewhere right around that six, right in there, that should be about the right setting. Now let's circle dance the rest of this off of here. So now you know a comfortable setting to get down the bag rate of Melorganite. Now you can go and logically walk off and apply other areas of your lawn. One last thing, any of the Melorganite prills that got onto your sidewalks or into the street, you wanna blow those or sweep those back up into the lawn. With that, I'm Alan Hayne, the Lawn Care Nut. Hope this tip has been helpful to you and you can get out and throw her down this weekend and I'll see you in the lawn.